Desma. It's Jim Desma, and we're back in From Depth. So, you're watching Building a Super Battle Carrier. And this is, of course, our project we build to our most high, Admiral LCG Canyon, our Patreon. Thanks also to Captain Scooby Rocks, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Commander Ejin, uh, Lieutenant Asteria, and Cadet Shark, and Marty McBacon. And Scooby Rocks is a captain, which we will begin a project on uh, later on. We'll do a little serious, uh, or a little video, or a little stream. We shall see um, how we shall uh, start on that project. But right now, we're right here to build this Super Bell Carrier. And as you can see, um, this is before I added the turret, so let's load in the correct version. So, it became a little submarine version, and in any case, the last episode we developed this new turret, as you can see here. Very nice, super cab, most of them have, so we should find under uh, underwater. And, uh, well, this is the turret, uh, it, is, it is a quite expensive turret. Now, I've... Um, Using this expensive railgun turret will definitely go over budget a lot, um, but we wanted to make a railgun setup as the main weapon, so building a railgun setup for this size, uh, I think the budget of 5 million for this craft when we are going to use a railgun as the main gun was actually kind of a little bit optimistic. Um, at least if we're making like a 500 meter ship, I should have made a smaller ship to have a budget like that. But anyways, uh, railguns, yes, 500 millimeters, uh, no, 400 millimeter quad railguns, and they are not rail assist, they're pure railguns, and of course that is ex that's, that is expensive. And as a main gun, well, expensive so um, I've added a few of them here and you can see we're already up in 3 million materials and 600,000 and we haven't added any of the auxiliary systems and we haven't started with the huge missiles yet because we are going to have some huge missiles so obviously we're going to go a bit over budget and hopefully that is uh, acceptable uh, we didn't have a hard budget uh, we needed to meet either, but um, in case LCG Canyon will have a real problem with um, this, that the budget kind of increases a lot, um, we can always uh, replace this turret with a cheaper, uh, like one barrel setup. So we can have a two, maybe two barrel turret. Um, we could make it a lot more. Uh, or we can even make it rail assist too to keep some costs down. But in any case, um, I thought that these placements for the turret was a good uh, good place to have them. So I've just spawned them here, and they are increasing the exact correct size, and uh, or correct like each of them are at uh, as much high as the other one. And you can see here that they go over, like the barrel goes over the turret below it with one blocks marginal, so they shouldn't shoot each other very much. Yeah. So that's kind of what we've been tinkering with, with placement of turrets. And I decided to uh, make some nice turret wells on top of the turrets, so we're kind of smoothing it out with one layer of metal like this. Um, so you can see here we have some wood backing it up underneath just to get some structural connections kind of and we just have one slab of metal there and of course this thing this well underneath is very sturdy it's uh, insulated with heavy armor and poles it's really sturdy uh, but we wanted to make it look nice so we're having metal and then we are having one layer of alloy over it, so it's kind of covering the uh, turret base um, or turret head base, kind of. We have a kind of necklace turret, but basically this head, we want it to go smooth against the 
well, surface. So I thought that looked pretty nice and I've copied over that design to the other ones so it's looking real nice and it doesn't inhibit movement in any way. Uh, and that's kind of what we're working with. We're going to next like connect the shapes so they go smooth together. Very nice indeed. So that's so far. I've been thinking to probably move the main tower a little bit forward. So basically over the AI compartment and having a uh, like missile tower ish thing in front of that. Haven't decided completely how we're how we're going to arrange the towers, but it's going to be three of them. Yes, and I think that's what we've been tinkering with for this thing. And it goes a little bit low. It does. But when we add air pumps in south, inside these main areas here, it's going a lot higher. I've tested that and it works. Uh, it's just that when we haven't covered the area, when we haven't like um, made it so it's not like an open hole like this, it kind of lags a little bit. <laughs> this is a big build. Bigger battles than my... I can't do battles with this thing, like with an equal size craft, because my computer ain't powerful enough. So I have to outsource the combat effectiveness testing of this thing. <laughs> Alright, so I have been working on smoothing these surfaces out here. And as you can see, I have connected them-ish a little bit, like this. Um, by smoothing out or adding these shapes here. And you can kind of see where I'm going with this and how I'm going to make it work together. And then I got a comment before that it would be better to part up the generator in kind of two sections and have the uh, generator in the middle and the steam turbines on the sides. And I have decided that I should probably do that because we kind of have a little power issues when firing these guns. Alright, and I have been working with smoothing out the shapes even more, so we kind of can see this kind of futuristic, very sleek design. I must say I do like it a lot and hopefully LZG Canyon does as well. This is just kind of a placeholder. Um, I've added these blocks here just to know where the barrels are and we're going to have some seaweed turrets here and there. And we're going to add something on the flat area there. I'm not decisive yet what I want to add there, possibly anti-missile missile, missile uh, turrets um, or some auxiliary damage dealing uh, system. And you can see these shapes here, I think it works really well shaping it out like this and uh, I think we're gonna have like a smooth area all across there and add details along it like for this section. And then we have also as I told you, maybe not. Is this the next person or this is this version? Oh, that's the next version. Never mind. Uh, so basically, yeah, that's the next one. So basically, um, there are some changes coming to this little build here. Uh, but thing is, having only penetrative uh, like shells for this thing doesn't really work. And uh, they are now using, some of them are like sabo heads and they have a problem where they want to deflect a little bit. And they also are not dealing the full damage. And while they work sometimes, uh, the, the damage potential is wasted because the armor piercing value is higher than any block that exists in the game. Um, yeah, if we don't count people using planar, uh, not planar shields. What it is? What is it? Um, ring shields, which we are going to use for this setup, actually. So, uh, except ring shielded stuff, um, they are just too penetrative. So, we are going to go over to past Gmodism, and uh, past Gmodism, he will take you through a 20-minute process of testing different kinetic shells that work in this setup. Remember, we don't have any ejectors in this system. It's a very, very, very compact uh, full rail system. So it's a very expensive way to deal damage for sure. But it's also a great way to throw kinetic slugs at your enemy. And while mixed rail gunpowder assisted setups uh, can be more efficient in terms of cost per material. This is compact and these turrets are very formidable 
kinetic damage dealing systems uh, for their size, despite being huge. But you know, they're very they're very strong. They're very good at dealing kinetic kinetic damage. But the shell they use, as said, were wasting some damage potential with those uh, sabo parts there. So past geomodism will take you through this process of testing different slugs and coming up with the final loadout of these weapons. So see you after that where we will be looking at the last iteration of this ship during this episode. Alright, past Jimodism here. We are at the testing bench. This is the platform, uh, which is downloadable by the way. And we're going to test some different, uh, well, shell types a little bit here because I realized that um, I was using too much armor piercing on the current shells. So what do we have in here? Well in this one <clears throat> we're having pure sabot. Uh, it deals 17,000 damage and the expected armor piercing is uh, 118 which is a lot more than any stacked block. Uh, like for example Stacked heavy armor is 72, so we don't need any more than 72. This target has an armor pierce uh, armor uh, class of uh, well 52, and you can see here I have a, a heavy armor backed metal piece, and I got some era behind that just to explode potential um, well chemical shells. Then we have four meters of metal, and that's of course the most heavy armor sensible people use, backed up by four meters of four meter slab to really absorb that kinetic damage, backed by one meter of heavy internal armor, and um, well, one meter of stone spall lining, <clears throat> and then just big slab of wood to symbolize if we go through or not. And I just changed the colors in the middle to easily see what type of component it is. Right, so this is the Sabo one. It's absolutely over doing the AP. <clears throat> and this thing is has a 56 uh, armor class or armor piercing value of 56 and deals instead 25,000 damage. So more damage actually done by this armor piercing head. And again, this is 52, armor class 52. This has an armor piercing value of 56, so it's still over penning a little bit there in terms of the damage it deals. So uh, let us test this thing. And there we go. So we can clearly see that even though we have much more uh, armor class, uh, the game still works the same way that kinetic damage matters more. And here you could see that it got through to the first, the four metal beams right through. It got through to the slab, but supposedly, let's just dive here. Penetration, okay. Kill to eight. Right, so speed is now four meters per second. Yeah, that's not very much. So it really absorbed that thing. 55 AP. And the armor piercing value remains the same during the entire bullet trajectory. Because that's something that I thought perhaps it would be good to have more um, armor piercing values than you actually have, uh, than you actually need, just because the AP value decreases alongside the trajectory's, uh, uh, well, shot. And this is not the case. It's It remains. The AP value remains. Same as here then. It begins at 116 AP. And it ends like that too. Kinetic damage, yeah. Right, so then it's really clear. Then I really check that. So then we'll need to change this shell a little bit. We can clearly see that uh, the one with no sabo with just armor piercing did a lot better. Just because um, I don't I don't 
know if you know this, but if you check the sabots, you can see that they have a kinetic damage modifier. So it only like if you have this, it only does 80% of the kinetic damage. And um, the head also has a similar stat. So we can clearly say that armor piercing is better. But here's the thing. Now, I wanted my shells to be quick. So these are going 1,900 meters per second. But when we have an armor piercing head, we're dealing less kinetic damage. So if we would swap this against uh, a heavy head, we're actually gonna change the sabot to heavy heads. But before that, we're gonna do one test more here. Um, so I'm thinking we're gonna leave the sabot head, but we're gonna change the warhead bodies against solid warhead bodies. And if we do that, it might do similar or same damage or even more. Ah, interesting. So uh, now we had a better armor class. We can actually just check it here. You can see the armor piercing is 80, which is more than stacked heavy armor, which actually means it gets through to the back side here. It almost it damages this block a little bit. But it got stopped right here. Yeah. So it actually got a little bit further when we have the Sabo head there. It's kind of interesting. Let's do a repair and just rerun this little fire here. Clear this and just fire. Yeah, there we can see it now goes through like that. And it still gets stopped, but we can clearly see it's not a big difference. But here we can see it's uh, it's not all bad. Well, we now had more armor piercing values than um, and this is slightly under. So this actually doesn't do full damage against heavy armor. And that's the difference. This one doesn't do full damage against heavy armor. But this done, this one does. All right, so we're going to switch this uh, one up to heavy heads. And we can clearly see here now that the shell is now should now be going at 1,784 meters per second. But expected kinetic damage is 39. That's a lot. It's going to switch this one as up because the, the previous one was, um, well, 25,000. So with the heavy head, it's 39,000. And the armor piercing value is only like 31. Uh, and the shell speed is like a lot slower. Oh. So it will be kind of interesting to see, will it get through? Okay, it gets kind of as far. So it does loads more damage. And in general, this is probably, if it doesn't get shot down by lambs, this is possibly a better setup to use. Uh, just heavy heads. So uh, we can do one thing with uh, heavy heads to really balance it out a little bit. And that is to change some of the solid warhead bodies to Sabo warhead bodies. And we can then get it up to deal a little bit more damage against blocks. So now it's 40. So that's that's better. Um, because if you remember, if we look at whoops, build menu here, you can see that um, metal has an armor class of 40. And stacked metal is, of course, a little bit more. I think it's 48. But now it should deal full damage against metal. So even though we are removing some thousands of damage, um, the proportion of damage dealt should be higher. So we shall check this thing, how it works. All right. And there we go.
it doesn't kill the blocks still. It's kind of very similar though, not a big difference. I would, I would have expected this difference to be a little bit bigger here. But apparently not. It's almost like... Um, it's almost like I'm I'm kind of wondering if we had hmm if we have a super cab if we have the super cab base and I'm not sure that's the right thing to do here so if we add up so we have some more of that damage and the heavy head what does it do yeah, it has the kinetic damage modifier of uh, 1.75, so that's why it's just dealing so much damage. Against softer targets, it would be better to actually use that. Uh, but if we have instead have the Sabo head, solid warhead bodies, um, and if we instead use a base bleeder, we could speed up this shell to be even quicker. So now... We should change this to the Sabo head. And we deal 23,000 damage at 93 armor piercing, and it's going uh, fairly quickly. Ooh, now we did more damage against the uh, heavy armor down there. Yeah, that's, that's not a bad setup. We won't get through, of course. The next shot, of course, it gets through, but yeah. That's kind of interesting. If we just change this to heavy heads instead, we can see we're getting a higher speed with a base bleeder. So base bleeder makes it less accurate, that's the problem. But it also makes it faster. So, if we do like that... still won't get through. We will have to combine the base bleeder with uh, some warhead bodies then too. But the thing is also that when we use, if we use a uh, Sabo head, um, I think it's a lot, it's a much higher uh, risk it actually bounces because it says it reduces effective impact angle to 75%. So when testing, it seems like the shells bounce more often too. And that's kind of why I'm a little bit reluctant to use Sabo heads. They are very good, but you'll you need to kind of hit point on. And if you're bouncing, all this, this damage is wastes. So I kind of want to refrain from using the Sabo heads, to be honest. I would rather like to use an armor piercing head or something like that. So if an armor piercing head we have expected armor pierce at 61. This should be pretty nice. If we use this, I think it might actually get through. So we're really trying to find the optimal shell for this design. And we need to go to damage debugging, clear this. I wish there was some kind of good button where we can just repair, refill, and yeah. No, it doesn't get through. Nope. It kills that block, but it gets stopped at that heavy armor, internal armor layer. And uh, sure, um, many might not have an internal heavy armor layer, but I do. And I want it to uh, not protect the targets. As you can see here, um, I just, I'm, I'm just going to rerun this test for you. Because it is kind of interesting. So we fire here and now we can see that we get some different results depending on what shell we have. Now we got the ricochet there, so and that's not uh, every time we get that. So we'll need to do it again. There we go. And then we got the ricochet in that one, it's actually getting in there. So here we can see we have one of these shells, this is 55 armor piercing and it actually gets all the way to the wall there. And this thing doesn't kill it. It's 66 AP and it has slightly less kinetic damage. So we can see the shell with lesser kinetic, uh, with more kinetic damage and less AP is actually better. So this one has 56.9, that's the 55. And it's, an, it's a solid armor piercing round with solid water bodies, super cab base. Because I wanted the super cab base, so skip the base bleeder. 
and I checked here if I added some more Sabo heads to uh, basically de deal more than full damage uh, against the uh, heavy armor, it could possibly be better. And I came to the conclusion it is not. So, what is the conclusion for this? Well, some of the turrets uh, will use solid armor piercing rounds. Uh, because that seems to be doing the most penetration. <clears throat> uh, but if it's more softer targets, the heavy heads would do more um, penetration damage. What I want to check now is that now we decided one of the shells, and that is solid armor piercing, uh, super cab base. Uh, and the other shell we're gonna use is, of course, uh, probably heavy heads. So just to compare. We're going to set this one up as just a solid warhead body so we can see it side by side. And we're gonna set this as a heavy head and just do one check more. And there we can see it penetrates equally long with the heavy head basically. So I'm thinking like um, one thing I know about heavy heads, that is that they slow down the shell, but they slow down the shell equally much like hollow point heads. And these would be some pretty strong hollow point cannons. And someone told me in the comments that if you use hollow points, you should also have, uh, um, we should also have um, a lot of, um, what are they called? Um, Sabo warhead bodies. Yeah, we're gonna combine it with Sabo warhead bodies to deal more damage. And we're gonna put this to the test. So these are now just, we're gonna make them regular hollow point shells with just kinetic damage. Hollow point head, solid word body. We can do like this. And we're doing the shot. Bam. All right. Okay, that's kind of interesting. So this of course penetrates right in and this stays on the surface, but these hollow points do actually damage a lot of the heavy armor. So these, this is serious hollow point. If we shoot again, we can see, oh wow. Yeah, the era is really good against hollow points too. Good to know. And if we shoot at metal, we really tear out chunks there. Now this is of course thicker than I guess most people's armor would be. But yeah, um, so I'm thinking we should have some hollow points as well, uh, just in order to deal multiple types of damage. So for example, if we hit the detection tower with these big hollow points, we are basically destroying this entire detection tower. And that's why it would be val valuable to have some, uh, some of these hollow points uh, into the turret mix ammo as well. Especially when the heavy head are almost equally as good as the armor piercing, but we do want the armor piercing because the shells are faster, they don't bounce as much as Sabo's, uh, and uh, if they're faster they might get through lambs, which it otherwise would not have. As we see here, we have the different two sides, and we're firing, and we can see the hollow points. You can see they're slightly different here. Watch as it progresses, it goes into softer materials, and the one to the right is like getting through a little bit quicker it seemed like first but then it kind of didn't okay let's try again and you see now now it got the head start the right one got the head start so we need to check these valleys for sure it's not a big difference but sometimes it gets uh, through a little bit and this is because this hollow point is actually only sabo and uh, a hollow point head so it has uh, almost 50 armor piercing. And this one is a regular, um, well, hollow point. And you can see this one deals 21,000 damage. And this one deals 17,000 damage. So for each sub overhead body we add, uh, the, the kinetic damage decreases, but more damage is dealt uh, against targets with, well, higher armor class. So I'm thinking kind of like this, that we're going to add some suppose, and you know, it was kind of sold to me as it's like a really big difference on the terms of damage it deals, uh, but I feel that there is a difference, sure, 
but it's not super huge. But I'm thinking if we are optimizing this to deal... So if we have 19,000, 20... Okay, so this is 20... Okay, so that's 1,000 less. I'm thinking like one or two sabos on these. So we are actually dealing at least full damage against... Okay, let's have two. So we're dealing full damage almost against stacked metal. And question is if that thousand in damage is worth it. Probably it is. Um, so we are kind of dealing at least full damage with the whole point because metal, realistically, will be the thing that we meet most often. So now we have the mix to the left. Yeah, I, I ooh. against metal, it's working pretty well. But this one gets through faster sometime. But I'm thinking also this is... We have like heavy armor here. And not all targets will have heavy armor at the surface. It's not a very good way to do it. But a lot of crafts use it. So we're gonna build against it. Alright, I might have found a shell which I think it's versatile and nice. And here we have it. Um, so I basically skipped the super cavitation base and went with a base bleeder so will be more inaccurate but will also be a little bit faster uh, and we're gonna have sabos so we're up to 50 ap might actually be more than we need so let's say let's say half sabo half solid we got to 46 so we're dealing basically full damage to stacked metal we have a whole point head base bleeder and that basically matched the shell to the same speed. And I'm thinking that we, uh, if we're having base bleeders on the hollow points, we need to have base bleeders on the heavy heads we're gonna match them with. So I'm thinking uh, one turret can be pure uh, armor piercing, uh, or some of the turrets can be pure armor piercing, and some of the turret can be hollow points mixed with heavy heads with base bleeders. And some can be hollow points mixed with heavy heads um, with, uh, well, super caps like the others. But basically, now, uh, I'm not sure if, did I set the other one up? Let's just, let's just do a final test here, so see we didn't mess something up. We got a base bleeder there. And we probably, did we do like that? Now we're done. So... And go through there, bam. Ironically enough, the one to the left is dealing, is doing better now. That's interesting. What did I have here now? <laughs> oh, this is this is super calves. Hollow point with super calves. They're slower. Twenty one thousand, almost twenty two thousand damage. Thirty. Wow. It. it yeah. Wow. The, right, the left one should be better in all, all regards if you look at the stats, but it depends on the target too. Weird. This is weird. This one doesn't have enough AP and it's going slower, right? It's doing almost 22,000. Right. And this one... It's going um, faster. It does almost the same damage, but with more AP. So, wow, that's, that's a little bit weird. Well, I guess I'll I'll just mix them in there, because I am I think that if we face them against uh, some... Oh, yeah, now I remember, yeah. Uh, well, it depends on the target. Um, we should have both, but some can absolutely be super calves, because then we can do hollow point uh, underwater. Hollow point damage underwater. So we're gonna have different shells. And that's the shells we're gonna have. So that is now decided. And that's the nice little testing session we can have. It's really good to have testing sessions like this and you really learn something uh, new, most of the time at least. And uh, quite valuable indeed. Then you can really uh, find the best shell for uh, your crafts. Well, 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 I hope you enjoyed the bullet test.
testing and uh, well the testing of the different slugs and we have installed the slugs in these little iteration of the ship you can see i've been working some more on the shapes here not a huge uh, difference but some <laughs> it's a big ship so it actually takes time dealing like each part maybe you think that it doesn't happen so much uh, during like a, each version but it's actually like hours of <laughs> work on each of them so in any case um what i have done is as as uh, i got the tip before i ported it up to two separate turbines that goes to one of these generators here so the generator is generating some good power here um, and that's 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 very nice however uh, i tested this like this battleship's continuous fire uh, consumption rate of engines over of energy per second and i quickly realized that we need a lot more uh, energy production like having rail as your main weapon is no joke it is expensive in terms of material it's a very strong system sure but it is expensive it's not the cheapest way to deal damage that's cram uh, but it's it's expensive yeah in any case it's very cool too these are full rail it's just like only rail and uh, the loadout is as follows, uh, the cannons that are closest to the water always have a super cavitation basis. The ones that are next closest also have super caves just because they are most likely to cut through the waves. These top ones here, they are actually having, if we just look inside of here a little bit, that's a mess. These are having the... Uh, oh that's super cap oh that's only because they shoot down like the middle section ones they these are the ones where i dare to go with uh, what are they even called if we go in here i forgot the part name help me thank you no oh it's oh it's only one of the turret now i remember one of the turrets this middle one actually this this turret uses uh, base bleeders so the these deal uh, <laughs> some more damage than the other ones all the other ones are super calves and that's because this the, the lower ones are most likely to cut through waves and they should really have super calves these topper ones uh, have a potential to shoot downwards at the enemy hull and we want to deal damage under the water too and this one has the kind of middle ground where it's most likely to not cut through waves because it's so low and uh, it's kind of medium so it will hit anyways and it's worth dealing that extra damage and we have a mix uh, of hollow points like the super calves this one that's hollow point um no no i mean the base bleeder is hollow point uh, mixed with uh, heavy heads and so is one of the super calves but um so two, two of the turrets use armor piercing i think which is only penetrating straight through so a little bit over damage but two of the turrets still have the capability because they go faster and are more accurate and are good at dealing damage at range and won't be able to be shot down by lands at all and the other ones are only like uh, a little bit slower except the base bleeder so yeah, it just works. Um, I've tuned them up here. We can look at them a little bit later, but that's what we've done. We loaded out this system. We increased energy production a lot because down here, I added this little section on each side, which is just a huge like bunch of steam turbines connected up like this in this double pattern with two boilers here. So it's kind of a little setup, and each uh, each on each side here, they're not heavily armored, but we need some kind of auxiliary energy production that's kind of heavy duty. And even if we have all these, I realized that these ones, I, I actually had to set, set the maximum on them, because if they were not set to something maximum, they would kind of stop the entire ship and uh, make the engine kind of stop and uh, total energy production to go down really much. And we want to have like at least 50,000, I think, to power our ring shields, which we're gonna add later. And that's gonna be a very important uh, protection. Because as you can see here, we want a landing pad. And this landing pad, this is like, this is like armor uh, to some extent. 
if we just go here and select our armor tool, we can see this has an armor class of 6, which is not very good at all. Whoops. But underneath it, we at least have some uh, metal, you know. And, well, the armor class of 6 is very little. But if we are able to boost this thing by having ring shields, we can survive a lot. Like, this rubber can survive a lot longer because it doesn't, it's not melting away as quickly. Of course, it's never going to be good. It's just that... The rubber and the metal and everything like that and the alloy, we need some uh, armor class boosting to keep us a little bit intact. And as you probably can see, like this structure here, um, we are going to put in some uh, wood poles and some, what are they called, uh, uh, truss blocks just to have kind of a light framework inside of the ship when it's done to kind of keep each piece together so we're not totally vulnerable against hollow point but as you understand this ar this armor here it's more for the look like the real armor is inside of here like this turret well is heavily armored you can see here we can like remove we have like heavy armor heavy armor pole metal stuff like that it's it's like really heavy duty stuff and I also added some auxiliary propulsion here. We have some extra propellers here and here on each side just to bring us forward a little bit. And of course we haven't added water pumps or filled up the area yet so we're not very stable yet. Um, or, or we're stable but we're not very high in the water. That's what I was supposed to say. And um, we have, you might look at these areas here and think you could bring this further down uh, you could make the turret internals longer and yes but the, the railgun is expensive as it is we won't be benefit much from making a longer version and we are then vulnerable against torpedoes one thing that's kind of smart to have air spaces before we have the actual turret well here is that we're not vulnerable for explosions that are close by like this this turret well can take a straight on hit with a very heavy missile without being destroyed. The turret will still be intact. And even if it was destroyed, half the turret would still be intact. So they're quite sturdy. And I'm thinking to actually put other stuff below here. So because we are having some engine problems, like we can sustain the fire of these rail guns if one of these sides will be blown up. And of course they will be. So we can only rely on having one of these surviving at max, preferably none of them surviving. We just want to have auxiliary and extra systems because this thing obviously doesn't generate uh, like enough power. So we are going to have more uh, electricity generation and I want to hide some of those systems beneath the turret wells because then they are pretty good. They are pretty well protected down here. Uh, we also want some more fuel engines to kind of take take some load um, of electricity generation and power generation. Yeah, so that's basically what we want to do. And I'm not sure if there's anything I have forgotten to show you, but that's basically what we've added in this uh, iteration. So just to make you see the power of the turret let's spawn a little crossbone and we can we have pretty crap detection i kind of realize but uh, we can make it far and you can see the cross the crossbone it's basically shooting through this is a little bit too light target to shoot at like the crossbone is so tiny in comparison to to our beast but you can see these rails except the thumpers or the hollow points they're just basically mel melting through this thing and oh now my heavy yeah oops sorry my huge missile barrage no it's not huge missile it's large missile barrage it kind of came and ruined the party for us but that's that um, these guns are no joke and yes 
using only railgun will never be the most efficient way to deal damage, but you'll have to give its damn cool. And here gives. Uh, we can ish keep up with the energy now demand as you can see. I'm gonna turn that off because it looks bad. But oh, this turret is also locked a little bit. But in anyways, you can see them in action here. Now my frames are a little bit sad. We're a bit, a little bit lagging. But uh, ooh, look, my lamp system is up and running. Oh wow, they can actually deal with the the coal. I did, I did make a decent lamb. Oh damn, the torpedoes. We haven't added any torpedo defense. Ooh, poor thing. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, that's why we're having these outward panels, by the way. That was the entire thought. You can see we took a barrage of like huge torpedoes and we didn't damage anything important. So th this is why we're having these. That I'm kind of happy uh, we got that on tape. Yeah, anyways. Got on tape. What millennia are you from, Jim? I mean, oh my god. I just spawned a stronghold because I wanted a little bit more meaty target to just check our weapons against. We didn't... I mean, that was that was pretty short, though. Wow. Okay, good. We at least know our damage dealing capability. Even though we are not finished by any means, it's no joke. Let's spawn another stronghold, because that was a little bit too quick. Alright. Ooh. That's gonna hurt. Anyways, let's take a look at what's happening with our with our turrets here. Of course, some of them get uh, deflected a little bit. But you can see they are... They're penetrating deep. Yeah, we're base... Oh, god damn it. No, now they're coming. Yeah, that's... They're dealing some damage too. They're actually dealing a lot of damage. But... Oh, wow. Yeah, cool. So our railguns actually shoot through the stronghold too. They're they're exactly what I wanted, like serious penetrator, crazy capability. And the it's kind of quick so it's hard to see, but the the thumpers or the hollow points I mean, they are taking away a lot of block on each hit. And of course my computer ain't strong enough to kind of showcase this properly but you can see we're having some we're having a nice slideshow but we're also having some nice damage dealt to this system and of course um, we haven't set up the AI to target the right pieces yet so that's something we're going to do um, and make them not shoot through as much. We could potentially make some shoot underwater and some shoot over water, dependent on how we set up our AI. Gonna be kind of interesting to see. Aha! Seems my missile protection was good. We seem to have gotten a direct cram or missile hit there. But as you can see, it's. Thankfully, it's still active. Ooh, here we got a real bad hit. Cool. I'm kind of happy it has barely touched the the recoil absorbers, but that's it. All the vital parts are untouched. Well, that was basically just that. And um, yeah, well, hopefully... This has been quite interesting and um, if you enjoyed this little video, well then please consider leaving a like. This is your host Jimmedesim and we shall be back with future iterations of this little series. In any case, huge thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to leave a like and if you haven't already, of course, subscribe. In any case, this is your host, Jim Rezen, and we're signing out.